Hi! Today we're doing Bring It On 4. Can I please go home? Well, not really Bring It On 4. Bring It On In It To Win It. Because apparently the last three movies, losing was an acceptable option. Other than that, what can I really say to introduce this festering corpse of an idea? Let's get started! The movie begins at the All-Star Cheer Camp Championship, so second movie in a row feels like we're starting at the end. How does it feel to be the centerfold for a loser? <laughs> Not this year. Sharks all the way. Yeah. Just because you skanks what? go all the way doesn't mean you're female. On you again. Right now. Oh, calm down. This acting is amazing! J to the E to the D to the S, that's your ass from east to west. All you do is shake your butts, cheer one of one for stupid sluts. People cheered for that? Well, yeah. Don't you cheer for sluts? I sure do. Yay, sluts! We're the West Coast Sharks, and we got fight. We got what it takes to win this fight. Yes, you skip, you dull, you old. Your moves and motions leave us cold. Why are they being such hams? I already hate everyone on the screen. Lachlan, they're competing for the championship of cheer camp. Get it? Cheer camp? Oh, fuck, that can't be it. Locky, the blue team is the Jets. The red team is the Sharks. Sharks versus Jets, and they're dance fighting! Stown the flyman crows. Cheer. Camp. So, everyone knows that she wakes up screaming from night terrors. And they all find this trait to be good, wholesome fun. Well, of course! After all, what's a Bring It On sequel without one trait stereotypes that are all stupid, terrible people? Damn! We're gonna have some fun! Fun? We are not here to have fun, Ruby. We're here to win. Do you think East Coast is here to have fun? Hell no, it's no fun. Okay, I won't use the F word anymore. See, he's a douche, she's a bitch. It's perfect. Hell to the year. Let's bust some East Coast attitude. Uh, reality check. The Jets have beat us three years in a row. What's your problem, Doom Cookie? No problem. Let the disemboweling begin. Oh, ha, 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 ha. That was some seriously bad acting. And of course we have sassy black character and morbid goth character. Because why the hell not? Pepper Driscoll and Vance Voorhees, owners of the two rival cheer camps. This is a movie about rival cheer camps. Pepper, can you tell us a little bit about the All-Star Cheer Camp Championships? I'd love to. Well, this year is extra special because the winning squad will represent our great nation on a cheer exhibition world tour. Well, this is just tremendous. Not only are we to accept that Cheer TV exists, so too does a world tour for a group of kids who went to a random camp for cheerleading. This is truly wonderful material for a feature film. I want to break something. Pepper's Camp has both champion squads that epitomize the clash in American cheer style. 
In fact, last year, one of her squads, the East Coast Jets, with their traditional cheer moves, narrowly defeated the West Coast Sharks. Another one of Pepper's squads, shown here with their new wave dance stylings, inspired by music video choreography. So, the big rivalry here consists of two groups from the same camp, making this other guy's camp completely moot. Good. Controversy is brewing over what exactly defines cheerleading, precision or flavor? Yeah, we've been wondering that for the past three movies, actually. The Sharks arrive at the hotel and their Captain Carson instantly goes into unlikable leader mode. We just got here. Yeah, and if you want to leave here winners, it's going to take practice, practice, and more practice. And after oh that... Oh my god, Carson. I'm like, so glad you came back this year. Hey, Brooke. Of course we came back. After losing to us three years in a row, it's like so brave. There's not even a reason. They're just ransom little cunts and there's not even a reason. We're only five minutes in, Lockie. Here. Back down on this. So, Carson has her squad go out and practice their routine in the center of a popular public area so that everyone gets a free and clear view on what they plan to bring to the competition. And she wonders why they haven't won yet. I think it's time for a little gorilla warfare. Brooke, where are we going to find gorillas? Just follow my lead. Really? Gorilla pun comedy? I mean, first, I was going to ask... Why do they have to go to war? But you got me. She said that just for the gorilla pun. And yeah, I'm sure you can say, well, it's just a kid's movie. It's allowed to be stupid. Except no, they cracked a slut joke earlier. So I'm not going to buy kid's movie, just bad movie. So these two idiots get up to conduct warfare by looking really stupid. And of course, it works. Yo, Paris Hillen, if you and this little purse dog of yours ever pull that skanky East Coast mess again, I will slice you like government cheese. You know, because she's the black one. Carson tells the squad to take a break and goes off into the middle of a theme park to work on her routine by herself. Because that makes sense. Then some shirtless dude comes running up out of nowhere and, while trying to play it cool, well gosh darn it, she nearly injures a baby and gets run over by a stroller and its operator. Isn't that just her luck? Hey, why do I feel like I met you before? You meet a lot of funless ice queens? No, she was that girl where they were giving out pickup lines that never work. So where you from? California. A place called Eden Hills. You? Uh, nowhere and everywhere. I'm an army brat. I'm going to wager that none of this matters. I've never been out of the country. We just moved back from London. Really? We're going there soon. Oh, uh, you're gonna love England. If this goes on much longer, I'm gonna chew me own arm off. Number? 916. <laughs> it's Carson. It's Penn. <laughs> 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 Carson then goes to her hotel room to tell her friend all about the guy she just met. He's awesome and smart, but in a good way. And he's hot. Kelly, it's hot. Aisha, I wanted to lick his abs. What? No awkward patrol for that? Oh, hey, we're lucky. In the original version, he was wearing a shirt, so she tried to suck on his rat tail. And what do you know? Penn is one of the evil jets. That's sure to complicate things. I like your hair that way, Chelsea. I like to see a gel. My hair always looks better when there's something sticky. <laughs> <laughs> like semen. I know what it meant! So anyway, Penn tells them he met Carson and they freak out because she's a shark and he didn't know. Penn, you need to know. Carson's a two-faced, backbiting, man-eating shark. Yeah, and guys hate biters. Wow, two blowjob jokes in five minutes. Apparently this person isn't just the stupid character, she's also the one that gets used for sex. And she's one of the bad guys. So now what, Captain? You gonna forbid me from seeing Carson? I would never do that. Good, because it wouldn't work. Holy shit! Are you telling me there's a character in a Bring It On sequel that looks at cheerleading as a hobby and actually values people and rationality over winning a trophy? Yes, but he has a stupid haircut.
The camp instructor lady introduces the new choreographer because they only have one, and then the camp instructors because they have like 30, and then the most important element of all to any cheerleading camp. This spirit stick was given to me by the father of cheerleading himself, Herky Herkimer. It embodies the heart and the soul of cheerleading, and it brings the luck of the cheer spirits. Oh, give me a break! Anyway, each team gets to keep the stick for a night, starting with the Jets. And who steps up to accept it? You will find good fortune while it's in your possession, Jets. Don't worry, Shorty. Use your words. Pen. Abs. Pen. Go, Jets. Oh, girl. You know a cheer crip can't be hitting it with the cheer blood. Cheer crips and cheer blood. What's wrong, Locky? That's how all American black people talk, regardless of social setting or familial environment. They are all Martin Lawrence. All of them. Oh, dear, hear, hear. What about Neil deGrasse Tyson? Does he talk like a respectful person with an education? Of course he does. Well, then, according to this franchise, he's white. Or, at any rate, not black. You're a jet? Yeah, it's a trip, huh? Why didn't you tell me? What, that I was a male cheerleader? <laughs> sure, that's a real panty drop. Great, another character that is a cheerleader talking about how shameful and unappealing it is to be a cheerleader. Hey, at least they're being consistent. One for defense. Oh, fuck off. Carson, I didn't know you were a cheerleader. Like, and what's the big deal? I'm a jet, so what? So what? I cannot have an interracial relationship. Oh, good. Our protagonist isn't just no fun, she also judges people on... other people, I guess. The leader of the competing camp then sends a video message to literally everyone at Camp Spirit Thunder. Looking very forward to seeing the championships. We've got a secret weapon this year. Which I will now tell you about so that you can fully prepare to battle it because I am a moron. And his secret weapon is... Guys who do fancy backflips. Which actually seems kind of obvious when you think about it. Meet the new and improved flamingos. See you at the gym. The flamingos? They can barely stand on one leg. Merciful Mithra! It's like half the dialogue was written by an eight-year-old, and the other half was written by a 16-year-old. That was stupid. It's either jokes rejected by American Pie, or jokes rejected by Saved by the Bell, neither of which were jokes that needed to be saved at all. Nothing's gonna stop us this week. Except the sharks. I've only got one thing on my mind, and that is crushing your squad. Again, these squad leaders seem to hate each other just for the sake of hating each other. Did one of them run over the other one's dog? What is the conflict here? The conflict is, they're bitches. The end. We then get a training montage full of noise and more semen jokes, and then this nonsense. Since what is dance a part of cheerleading anyway? Since the world first started recognizing that cheerleading was real? I mean, think about it, you guys. If you've got some dope cheerleading, you're throwing some hot dance moves, and you got some crazy tumbling, what do you have? You got a triple threat, right? First of all, no! You would have dancing instead of cheerleading. Secondly, the world recognizes it as real? Um, yes. It is a thing that people do. They've been doing it for a long time. Of course it's real. What you meant to say was people recognize it as a legitimate sport, which it isn't. And the emails come rushing in. And I'm not going to read them. Come on, girl. Sunshine, I have seen better facials at a funeral. And I'm talking about the corpses. Mm -hmm. Oh, we like that, do we? Well, you just make that smile. Oh, gosh. Okay, all right, well, the workshop is over. Goth character is a vampire. Of course. If you hate cheerleading so much, why do you do it? For Satan. Satan is my car. My parents promised me payments and insurance if I joined the squad. And she named her car Satan. Kids do that, you know. The goth ones. Well, my parents promised me a car if I stop cheerleading. And if I nail a girl, I get my own apartment. His parents are disappointed that he's a homosexual and are hoping it's just a passing phase. 
That is hilarious. Brooke appears to give them shit for no reason, then Carson appears to save the day. Cheer off. Sharks! Yeah. What? What's happening? It don't matter what we do, music baby is our too. Hands and shoulders, face so tight, all our moves will rock this fight. They're dance fighting. Only this time, it's not a nightmare. Gonna feel like it, Sammy. Our moves are tight, we lift with ease. The things we do will make you weak. So watch us strike our muscle bones. While you all prance and don't see those. Mate, this is brutal. Don't make me watch this. Deal. After the awfulness, Brooke jumps up and lays a wet one on Penn, who gets pissed and storms away, with Brooke and Carson both following. Hey, Brooke. What? You've got no clue you're in the dark. Wake up call, it's the year of the- Whoa! Ah! <laughs> Why, is throwing yourself backward part of the plan? How did that fall even happen? While moping about looking like jackasses, the sharks are given possession of the spirit stick. Taking it safely back to their hotel room, the others leave to play cheer poker with another team. I don't know either, that's just what they said leaving Carson alone to guard the stick. But then Penn shows up and says, hey, let's go out. And she's like, I can't because you're on a different squad. And he's like, so what? So they go to the amusement park together, almost like the no dating between squads thing is entirely meaningless. I take cheer seriously. You know, my team's counting on me. I'm not gonna let them down. Word on the street, it's just summer camp. Yeah, maybe for you. Winning a competition like this, it could really help my chance of getting a scholarship to college. To do what? What do you mean? Well, I'm sorry, but if your goal is to go to college and your path to get there is a cheerleading scholarship, what the fuck is your plan for college? Being a cheerleader doesn't make you inherently stupid. I know, I, oh, okay, look, all I'm saying is if you go to college on a baseball or football or basketball scholarship, then at least you have a viable goal, right? Because almost all professional sports careers are launched out of college. But if you go to college on a cheerleading scholarship, why the fuck are you in college? Look, I'm just saying, if I find out that my doctor or lawyer or accountant or whatever only got into college because of cheerleading, they're fucking fired. Anyway, Funless and Rat Tail are walking on their date when Penn decides to tell Carson a secret. Even though my family has money, I took a team scholarship because I didn't want him to find out about cheer camp. Oh. So, where did your dad think you were now? Extreme Warrior Martial Arts Camp. Yep. So, the character who says relax, cheering isn't the meaning of life, is also the character who's so driven to cheer that he's lying to his family and friends about which team camp he's attending in order to do what he loves with no shame. That's not a mess of a character, is it? The tertiary cast discovers that neither Carson nor the spirit stick are in the hotel room, and they go out in search of her, finding her quickly and conveniently with Penn. Carson, give us back the spirit stick. Your junk up has come out here with all these civilians. Ruben, it's in our room. No, it's not. Why do you think we're out here looking for you? Because she's the main character, and without her, you're all just a bunch of unwritable one-joke cutouts? Just give it back. Carson, this isn't a jet sprank. Look, Carson, I hope you look for the stupid stick, all right? What? Stupid stick? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, don't get all crazy about this, okay? No, it's not okay. How can I trust someone who lies to his own team? Carson. You know, he didn't need you guys to raise travel money for the trip. He was too scared to tell his dad about cheer camp. <laughs> wow. Way to turn on a guy instantaneously with zero evidence. With zero evidence that he stole your stick. She's a liar. Right, Penn? No, bro. I should have just believed you when you said sharks and jets were sworn enemies. Now I know why. You showed your true colors, didn't you? Mm. Mm. And you showed you're just a jet. Princess. When someone says, gee, 
You're a knee-jerk reactive backstabbing cunt, and your reaction is the equivalent of shut up, you lose the argument. Now, if Penn were smart, he'd forget about your ass tomorrow and move on with his life because you're a petulant, selfish child. Yeah, well, if Penn was smart, he wouldn't have a rat tile. So, it's true. You lost my spirit stick. Pepper, I'm sorry. Look, I got distracted. Well, it was up to you to guard it with your lives. Oh, good. The authority figure that doesn't listen when people speak. I've missed that. We'll find it, Pepper. Oh, you'd better. Yeah, so on the real, what happens if we don't? Oh, who knows? You remember that cheerleader I was telling you about? Uh-huh. Well, after she broke her leg, her entire team got some kind of nasty stomach virus, and they all vomited on the competition floor, all right? And needless to say, everyone was happy to see them go home the next day, including the judges. So you've had them battered and poisoned. Good to know. Of course, the sharks believe themselves to be cursed for losing the stick, using it as an excuse to suddenly not put any effort into their maneuvers, and blaming it for things like this. Damn curse. Yeah, that's not a curse. That's a mental problem. <gasps> you know they stole the stick. It don't matter who took it, we gotta bust a cap in this curse. Because she's black! I think it's time for Sarah to do her thing. A cheer sacrifice? Has it really come to that? Well, if it'll get us a win, we'll do it at midnight. Almighty fallen cheer angels, we summon thee from darkness. Oh, do you now? Bloody hell. We're sorry about your spirit stick, but shouldn't you be cursing the skanky succubi that stole it? Not us. While you process our request, will you please accept our sacrifices? Ah yes, the cheer demons will truly enjoy your petrified cat and lazy gay joke. Girl, you're lucky strapless. If you love something, set it free. Ah! Or set it on fire. <laughs> I get those two mixed up sometimes. Say so when her kids leave for college, Will she be chasing it with a flamethrower? At any rate, the Jets arrive to fuck up the ceremony and things get for really reals. You couldn't even beat me in a cheer off, loser. All right, that's it. You want a real battle? Sharks and Jets, right now. Fair fight, no contact. Cheer rumble! <sighs> a cheer rumble, huh? Which might carry some weight if we knew why they were being mean to each other. This is just stupid. What happened tonight is an all-time, an all-time low for Camp Spirit Thunder. Of course it is. Well, come on now. It's not like they're, say, the Boy Scouts of America. Well, sure, but nobody's that embarrassing. You just ruined this camp's chances against Vance. All our other campers are cheer failures. Neither of you have enough team members to compete now. So in the morning, when you get up, there'll be buses here waiting to take you all home. The camp, of course, will be keeping the money for the days you won't be here. The kids go back to their rooms all bummed out, and Carson has the rare second nightmare in a Bring It On movie. Where's the spirit stick, Brooke? I know you have it. You are still the rock star of stupid. Why would I keep the stick and stay cursed? Pepper? <laughs> what the hell? Brooke didn't steal the spirit stick. She would have given it back by now to get rid of the curse. But that means... 
kind of had nothing to do with it either. Mm, no, it doesn't. But hey, if it'll teach you not to attack people without evidence, then sure, why not? You guys, we can't leave like this. It's like we're giving up. No, it's like you're being thrown out. Because you are. Brooke, I don't think you stole the spirit stick anymore. Like, I give a flying tuck what you think. Well, I do think you want to win camp championships as much as I do. So what? Well, if there was any chance to stay and compete, you consider it, right? Even if we're not coming together. Pepper wants her camp to win. I think she'll help us. Really in a plan, Carson. Come on, Brooke. Boo that, freak. We're out of here. Wait. She's not going to help them because she thinks that her team is cursed because of the sharks, but working together might be the only way to undo the curse. Now the only way to undo the curse is to get the stick back. How did the Jets get cursed? I don't know, I'm asking you! How would I know? You're the one who likes this stuff. I will fucking murder you. What? You wanted me to say yes to Hillary Duff, light? Strap on a pair, Pen. Can I borrow yours? I just never pegged you for a quitter. I'm not quitting, Pen. I'm embracing my future, which is freaking bright. Everyone says so. So, of course, after making no argument whatsoever, Pen has convinced her to make the squad stay. But leaving wasn't their choice. They were being evicted. Well, none of the instructors are overseeing their departure, apparently, so I guess it wasn't that big a deal. You two perform together in what? A cheer death match? No, we would be co-captains. But please give us a second chance. Sorry, don't believe in those angel pants, so y'all just... The Flaming Ghosts! We are the Flaming Ghosts! We... The enemy camp cheerleaders are just crashing the gates? Is that... Common? Anyway, since the guy was a douche and just busted through her property, Pepper lets the remains of the Sharks and Jets team up, even though she was trying to evict them. But whatever. The group calls themselves the Shets. Seriously. How about the Shets? And they start working on a new routine together. Afterward, Carson chases down Penn because dragged out love themes are important to this franchise. Um, you know, I was hoping that we could talk. And by talk, I mean, you know, I thought that maybe we could have a do-over. Do-over? <laughs> Carson, I think we're done. Look, Carson, I'm gonna work my ass off to help our team win. But you and me, I think we should stick to our own coast. All right? Excellent! A mostly consistent character with a grounding in logical actions, and he's not a complete douchebag like nearly every other character in Bring It On History! Good for you, Pen. Now go get a fucking haircut! The camp has some kind of luau event because things just sort of happen in this movie, and Brooke ventures off to find Pen, who is moping on a rock. Bet I can cheer you up. Don't be a wad, Pen. Go find Carson. <laughs> Not up. Go get her, fool. Yeah, but after she ratted me out, I. I can't make myself trust her, you know? Why not? Why not? What the hell kind of pointless fucking question is that? He just said why not! Anyway, Penn basically says, no, Carson is dead to me. And then we go to a practice that degenerates into madness! Eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, and two, and hey, three, and four. Hey, ever heard of this new thing called counting? Everybody stretch, now! Ever heard of teamwork? Shut up, Carson. Yo, watch it, cuz. Yo, stop frontin', cuz. I heard you with Chicago. You're not just an Oreo, Aisha. You double stuffed. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but it inspires a very tender moment. Look, y'all, all this girl please and cursing, it ain't me. I mean, it isn't me. I just did it to get your respect. Perhaps a discussion of the word respect is in order. See, the real Aisha got teased every day in junior high for being an Oreo. <laughs> you know, black on the outside, white on the inside. And I've been hood ratting it up ever since. Ooh, you're whiter than me. Maybe so, but that's who I am. Just the black girl who enunciates. <laughs> yes, because white people, 
as a species, are known for their mastery of intelligible dialect. Just ask. To can, to tweet. Uh, to, 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 uh. Or. Because I I'm never uh, felt comfortable with the phrasing of heavy metal because it didn't have any musical connotations. Or. Uh, I, 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 and, as we discussed earlier, black people, as a species, are known to be crude, sassy, and belligerent. Just ask these people. We need preschool. We need Head Start. We need prenatal care. The education process begins even before the child is born. All of us had more in common with each other than we did with anybody else in the world. We have our friends, our loved ones, our family, but there is a language that we speak, that we walk that same walk everywhere. We know how it feels. <laughs> oh, and uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. I'm a virgin. What? I just act that way so guys will like me. Um, nobody asked, nobody cares. My parents aren't bribing me to be a cheerleader. What the hell is this? Nobody gives a fuck. I do it because cheerleading is dark and twisted. No, it's not! Shut up! You know, I act like the fearless captain who's not afraid to go for it, but in reality, going for it is my biggest fear. And nobody cares! I just wish I could believe in myself as much as I believe in all of you. I'm not gay. You're also not a character! Or a plot point or anything fucking useful, so sit the fuck down! This is all so completely pointless, I hope all of you die in a house fire! You're getting awfully worked up. You wanna chew on the belt some more? No! I cannot believe how fucking void of purpose all of this is! None of these revelations mean anything, and it's doing nothing more than making the movie longer! I can't believe that you're not worked up about this! I don't know. Something about having somebody freaking out right beside me is really therapeutic. It's like you're my anger surrogate, freaking out so I don't have to. Almost like an out-of-body experience. Only... Not. So, after way too much time spent on watching them practice, the squad decides to break from legitimate preparation and spy on the squads from the opposing camp. And are immediately busted with zero consequences. Thanks for wasting another five minutes. That's when Carson zones out staring at a roller coaster and Genius just runs up and kicks her in the face. So, you see how the red and blue rails loop, crisscross, and then corkscrew away? Yeah, almost like a double helix. That'll be the path of the two flyers. Sweet. <sighs> Imagine if we pull it off. That'd be sick. Be awesome. oh, cool. But is it possible? Don't worry, gang. I'm sure this millionth training montage will really give us the edge we need. Woohoo Woo indeed, Voorhees. This means we're almost done, right? There's a routine by a nobody squad, then one by the Prairie Dogs, the bumbling idiots from Camp Spirit Thunder. And for some reason, the Prairie Dogs, who Pepper herself referred to as basically hopeless, have rattled the shets. This is a cheer disaster. A cheer catastrophe. A total cheer clips of the sun. They really need to stop that shit. I agree. It's making me want to cheergle them in their sleep. There are three more squads padding the film before the evil flamingos of Camp Victory head to the mat for their big pink performance. Carson starts to freak out, so Brooke takes her aside for a pep talk. Stop psyching yourself out. Look, I'm totally fine. You're totally not, and they know it. You're scared. Brooke, what else do you want me to say? You've been right about me all along. I'm not a good leader. My skills are you that great. This is not about skills. This competition is about showmanship, and your choreography is gonna win it for us. Don't you know you're more creative than me? Why else would I bother to put you down? What? 
their years-long rivalry of bitchitude is because Brooke thinks Carson is creative? If this competition is about showmanship and Carson is so creative, why hasn't she been able to lead her team to first place yet? I mean, you could say it's because she gets nervous and loses her grip, but then how the fuck was she leading her team to second place two years in a row? No, that doesn't fucking matter. Brooke has been hating on a person that she's soundly defeated for years because she thinks she's creative. That is fucking stupid. Take it easy. We've still got the Shets performance yet. Don't worry, I'm sure that killing your momentum and confusing the crowd was all part of the winning strategy. Okay, so there is a routine after that, uh, unique start. I'm sure it's really impressive and all, but mostly it just felt really long. And of course, there's a point where it just turns into a dance number. And then they splice in images of the roller coaster so you can recognize the big finish because you're watching Bring It On 4 and you're probably too dumb to remember the move they came up with five minutes ago without having it spelled out for you. Oh, I certainly feel dumber. Huh? <laughs> okay, let's get those results. I have the results right here. I'll be reading third place, apparently. Nobody cares about third place. In third place, representing South Dakota, the Prairie Dog. Nobody cares. Fuck them. Next. Coming in at second place, the Flamingo. Still don't care because we were never given any information on them or any reason to invest a fucking thought. The winning squad that will represent the United States on a cheer exhibition world tour is the East West Shack. <laughs> Yeah, representing America worldwide, a group of jerks that named themselves the Shets. Pepper, that's something for you. My spirits did, Lance. I knew it was you all along, but why? You don't even believe in it. No, but you do. And I just like fucking with your head. Then, of course, the love interests kiss and uh, teleport to a horrible studio green screen. He's so fresh and he got what he needs in person. Just look at the way that he dressing. Ain't no question, chicks like oh. Did the movie just suffer a psychotic break? What is this music video all of a sudden? Whatever, it's fucking over. So, what did you think? Fuck you. Personally, I love the fact that almost nobody in this movie is in it to win it. Aisha is willing to go home, Ruben loses his pep, goth chick is mopey, Brooke is perfectly happy to go home, Pepper wants to throw them all out without a second thought, nobody has any faith in the prairie dogs, and our leading male is walking around not really giving a shit about cheerleading at all. At least not until the script forces him to have daddy issues, but most of the time he's all... Word on the street, it's just summer camp. Only two people are all that invested in winning, and that's Carson, who's just whiny because she's jealous, and Voorhees, who's a fat shithead. And I still don't really understand all that business with the Voorhees and the hockey mask. Yeah, me neither. I also don't get how Voorhees knew the spirit stick was in Carson's room, or how he broke in and swiped it without anyone in the building noticing. Or why Pepper was a Reba McIntyre impression. Or why there are cheer demons. Or why this movie exists. Or why this movie exists. Bloody hell, Ted. 